Well, hey, I'm Bishop Joseph Walker, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Mount Zion Bible Study right here. We call it a Deeper Dive, and we appreciate you every week for joining us in a variety of different topics and things we do to help grow believers and produce achievers. For us, we're so committed to God's Word, and we thank you for being connected to us on today. Let me tell you something. We're really excited about all the comments that many of you share with us. Make sure right here on this YouTube page you like, you share, you comment. We read them, and it helps us to continue to grow together in God's Word. I'd love to connect with you. Follow me at Joseph Walker 3 on Instagram. Follow my wife at Dr. Steph Walker. Follow our ministry at MT Zion Nashville. We would love for you to do that also. We definitely appreciate you. Download our app. Great way to get notes and all the information every week you can email to yourself. So I promise you, it'll bless you. If you want to go deeper in God's Word, get that app. I'm telling you, find more about our table talks, to our Christian education department right there on the app. Find out where they're meeting, and we have these life groups that will totally bless your life. Now, this Sunday, we're going to be celebrating our First Lady, and I want you to be there, y'all. It's going to be amazing. I'll be sharing the word, but we're just going to love on her because every year it's important that we just thank God for our First Lady, and I want y'all to help us celebrate her. We'll be doing it at our OHB location, observing her throughout the entire day at all services, but OHB will be the finale, and so make sure you send her a uh, special message and love on her on this Sunday any way you choose to do that. Thank you in advance. We appreciate you. And I, as her husband, really do appreciate that. So thank you. I want to give you an opportunity now to sow into the kingdom of God as we give. It's always a blessing to be able to give. And today, as we give our offerings, our tithe, let's do it to the glory of God. So however God has blessed you and you feel led to give right here at the giving platforms, make sure you do it now. And thank you in advance. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the spirit of generosity, and thank you for those who are locked in today. As we go through your word today, I pray uh, that you will help us to grow as believers, and we give your name the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so last week, we had a, a robust conversation around stronghold. Today, I'm going to talk about stress. Whew, I already know you locked in on this one, because the real question is, is it possible to live a stress-free life in the world in which we live? <laughs> it's a good question, right? We're going to address that. I want you to understand we live in a tension, charge, fast-paced world full of demands and complexities, pulling you in every direction, so much going on. And I recognize there are a couple of questions that we have to ask ourselves. Does Jesus offer us a stress-free life? And does the Bible offer us solutions on how to live a stress-free life? I believe the answers to these questions are yes. And I believe that if you really tap into this teaching today, you're going to learn that you're too blessed to be stressed. Let's get right into it. First of all, I want you to get a biblical picture of stress-free living, and I want you to get it. See, we look, first of all, a scripture found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 33. Do not worry about your life. Look at the birds of the air. Why do you worry about your clothing, Jesus says? Consider the lilies of the field. If God, and he does, clothes the grass of the field, will he not much more clothe you? But seek first the kingdom of God. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about the things of itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This passage has blessed me over the years, y'all. It has blessed me so tremendously, and I know many of you are hearing it now. It is a message around, why are you worried about stuff that God's going to take care of? The birds fly freely through the air, not worried about anything because they know their Heavenly Father will take care of them. If nature doesn't worry, why is it that God's finest and highest creation does? See, let's define stress. See, stress is simply a factor that creates mental, emotional, and physical strain. A factor that creates emotional, physical, and emotional or mental strain. Why is it important? Because the unresolved tension in our lives 
continues to build up and build up. And inevitably, what that can do is create within your life and mine a variety of physiological issues, heart attack, stroke, a lot of stuff. We'll get into that. But let's get to this because I believe when you think about the biblical term for stress, the word affliction comes up. The equivalent of stress in the scripture is affliction. And affliction can be defined as the pressure which affects a person's life. It's a broad term. It includes a lot of factors that contribute to stress. Affliction in the Greek means anguish, burden, persecuted, tribulations, trouble. Now keep in mind, God did not promise us that we would be exempt from stress or anxiety, but rather he would enable us to live in such a way that these things would not impact us. Now, you know the scripture I'm about to go to now. John 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken to you that in me you will have peace. In the world you will, and I promise you, have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have already overcome the world. You see, stress is a universal problem that periodically troubles every believer who's watching me now. Every Christian, every unbeliever, you're going to have to deal with stress and challenges. One phone call, one meeting, you know, one day can be great. The next day can be a day full of challenges. You say, I'm so stressed out. What's going on? Well, Paul even experienced this. For we are pressed out of measure, Paul says. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8. For we do not want to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, he says, that we were burdened beyond measure above strength so that we despaired even our lives. Paul is saying we went through a situation that was so difficult that it created a level of stress that we, we just hate, hated just being there in our own lives. Isn't that amazing? How the enemy, as we talked about last week, creates strongholds through the stress to cause you to self-destruct? Listen, common symptoms of stress. You may be asking, how do I know if I'm stressed out? Well, mental, emotional fatigue, drug and alcohol dependency, loss of appetite, high blood pressure, frequent headaches, stomach problems, heart problems, migraines, ulcers, insomnia, hypertension. All of these signs of stress. But I want you to understand something. This stress that creates anxiety, it creates irritability and frustration. It is after your human relationships and your divine relationships. The enemy can create enough chaos, frustration in your spirit and your mind. You can no longer be fruitful and do the thing that God has called you to manifest. The common causes of stress are quite interesting. What causes it? Well, I already know as I teach this, some of you are like, I know what's causing my stress, but let's think about it. Sometimes the tempo of life can stress you. The responsibilities, one thing after the next thing. That's why I tell people it's important to be organized and to take control of your calendar versus allow your calendar to take control of you. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 40 that all things be done decently and in order. You know, the failure to seek adequate rest and relaxation, I'm guilty of that. Being up all night long, not getting those that rest in, not getting that seven to eight hours of rest every night can create a level of stress in your life. You know, the poor use of time, not being a good steward of your time can create stress. What did the day go? I'm running out of time. I can't finish all my... Because you are wasting too much time on things that, you know, could be hindering you, addictions and a variety of things. There's a lot of time gremlins. Let me just run through these others. You know, poor diet, um, you know, the wrong priorities, Lack of exercise. I mean, there's just a variety of conflicts, unresolved sins, spiritual conflicts, just, just all kinds of things that can create 
levels of stress in your life. But hear me well. I saw something that's very interesting that I'll share with you. How to join the coronary club, membership requirements. You want to join the coronary club? Let me tell you how to do it. Never say no to a request. Say yes to everything. And ladies and gentlemen, you in the coronary club. You're about to yes your way to a heart attack. I have learned that no is an answer. Here's the other thing. Your job comes first and personal considerations come second. You're so locked in on just work, 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 work. You're never doing anything to pour into yourself. When people accept every invitation, every banquet, everything they go, I got to go, I got to be there for the people. You are stressing yourself out, right? So you view, you know, vacations or golfing or just getting away as a waste of time. Yeah, you're going to be a part of the culinary club. See, it is important that you don't sacrifice your personal health. You don't sacrifice your mental health on the altar of trying to just be productive and doing things. All of this has to work together. God would never give you an assignment that would stress you out. Let me say it again. God never gives us assignments that stress us out. What stresses us out is when we add things to the assignment that God gave us. That's what creates stress and burnout. See, listen. I found out that when you have unresolved issues, unresolved stress, it can create underlying issues like burnout. Have you ever burned out? Let me tell you something. You have to avoid it. You have to know how to pull away. I have learned, and I'll say it to you, God can get this done without you. I'll say it one more time. For the people in the back, God can get this done without you. So listen, what are some principles for stress-free living? I want you to look over at Psalm 66 in verse 12. We went through the fire, we went through the water, but you brought us out to rich fulfillment. Look at what God has already done. Look at his track record. The psalmist says, you, you brought us to the fire, you brought us to the water, we know what you have done in our lives. So no matter what I'm confronting, no matter how chaotic it is, no matter how out of control it may be, if I reflect back over what God has already done, that brings a level of peace into my life and stress has no space. The reason you are stressed out because stress depends on your amnesia, your lack of remembrance of the goodness and grace of God. Listen, I believe people of God that when you recognize that Romans 8.28 says, all of it is working together for your good, you don't stress it. You're like, I have to take the good and the bad. That's why Job said, shall we just accept good from God? Sometimes you need some of the bad. But when you know God is working it, you don't get stressed out. Let me tell you something. My former band director, the late Dr. Isaac Greggs at Southern University, would always say something, and I carry this in my spirit every time I go through something. I hear him saying, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I don't know who this is for, but I want you to know, it's going to be all right. I know the doctor may have given you an unfavorable report, but it's going to be all right. I know you may have just lost your job and you may be out here searching and wondering when will somebody, it's going to be all right. If God did it before, ladies and gentlemen, he can do it all over again. I'm telling you what I know. And so you got to deal with it and move on. How do you deal with unresolved conflicts? How do you deal with all that stuff, sins in your past? Man, the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, therefore, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. So let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with patience the race that is before us, looking to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. That, ladies and gentlemen, that is how you deal with unresolved sins. I am laying aside all the stuff that historically has hindered me. Look in your life and say, what has historically hindered me, tripped me up, and lay it aside. Ask Holy Spirit to give you enough power and authority to release it. See, sin can generate inner tensions in our lives and conflicts, and you have to always remember sin is in it to kill you. But I want you to hear something. 
Woof. When you deal with sin and you deal with strife and conflicts with people, you can relieve so much stress. A lot of our stress is because we've had conflict with individuals, and every time we see the person, you know, it exacerbates it or it becomes a trigger. You've got to be the bigger person. You've got to hear Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. God says, I don't want you to do it if you have unresolved conflict in your spirit. That's why you've got to Learn, man, time is moving too fast to be carrying some of this stuff you're carrying. You're carrying all this stress and anxiety, and it, it's got your head hurting, it's got you not sleeping, it's got you on the verge of a coronary. Let me tell you something. You have to learn the power of redeeming the time. I want you to put in the chat, time. That's what you will not get back. When you think about time, you begin to say, Lord, let me manage time more effectively. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16 reminds us to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but be wise, and redeem the times because the days are evil. Not wasting time. One of the things I've discovered, when I have my day together and I'm planned out and I get things done, there's no stress involved in that. What the stress is is when you have procrastinated and you're trying to get things done quick, you're like, oh, my God, and you're imploding. You got, oh, it's just so much happening. You have got to be a better planner. Redeem the time. Let me tell you something. Give everything to God in prayer. The hymn writer says, oh, what needless pains we bear because we do not take everything to God in prayer. I want you to know right now, give it up to him. He can handle it. It's too heavy for you. Give it to him. Cast your cares upon him. 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Think about it for a second. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Watch this. And the peace of God, hallelujah, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts, and your minds through Christ Jesus. I just believe the reason why we rob ourselves of the peace we need is because we do not go to God. We hold on to it. I got it. I'll be all right. You're not going to be all right until you release it. Let, you got to be willing to let this go. It's okay to say I'm not okay because the moment you say I'm not okay is the moment you're willing to release it. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to trust in God's word. You got to remember Romans 15 and 4. For whatever things were written before time were written for our example. I like that. That we do patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. God gave us an example in his word. And those things bring us comfort because we're able to say, oh, I'm not the only one that's gone through this. Or I've seen God make ways like this before. So when you know what you know, it shows up in such a powerful and extraordinary way. Fellowshipping with one another, though. Lord, let me not be in a silo. Let me not stress myself out and be stuck over here in a bubble. But let me get in a space where I can commune with others. Romans 15, 32, that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. Paul Speaking, he also said Corinthians 7, 13. Watch this one. Therefore, we have been comforted in your comfort and we rejoice exceedingly more for your joy, the, the joy of Titus, because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. See how this works? Once we are in proper alignment in relationship with God, we're able to release these things and our relationships with others become better because we come into those relationships knowing we are better together. Can you put that in the chat? We are are better together. How about all caps? We are better together. Can't live life alone. I've tried it. Many have tried it. We need community. We need to get to a place where we can absolutely say, Lord, I thank you 
for everything that I've had to experience, but I also thank you for the spiritual maturity to rise above it all and not be stressed out. Child of God, I've learned to just laugh. Some of you are too serious. You got to laugh sometimes. Why? Because Proverbs 17, 22 says that laughter is like medicine. It does the heart merry. When you laugh, when you create opportunities to have fun, that brings your stress level down. I cannot promise you. You're not going to have adverse adversaries. I can't promise you that everything's going to be rosy. What I can promise you is that you can transcend it all and be stress-free and declare with your life, I am not going to be stressed out another day of my life, but I am going to walk in the peace of God that passes all understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the word. I want you to live stress-free life. Let me tell you something. Every day in the life of your pastor, most pastors, we're inundated with a variety of different challenges, cause of death, cause of sickness, people needing us to help them get through difficult seasons, and those things collide, collide, collide. And you may say, Bishop, how do you deal with it? I deal with it because I stay aligned with God's word, and I allow him to handle what I cannot. I acknowledge my own finiteness, my limitations, and I say, God, I surrender this to you. And I choose to live a stress-free life. Don't let this stuff stress you out. It'll rob you of your blessing. Don't work that hard so that you can retire to just have a stroke because somebody stressed you out. The devil is a liar. Hey, so I want to give you an opportunity right now if you want to accept Jesus Christ. That's where peace is. I want to make sure you do that, make that decision right now by texting the word SALVATION to 78228. It'd be the best decision you could ever make in your life. Do it now. I promise you. That's where peace is. Know him. Many K-N-O-W. Him is the K-N-O-W peace. N-O him. It's in O peace. You get it. Salvation, 78228. Be a part of this ministry. We'll cover you. We'll put you on a path. Our goal is to grow believers, produce achievers. Next week, our ministry alliance will be teaching Bible study. So leading up to the anniversary. They're saying, Bishop, we got a word we want to share with the people concerning leadership, concerning you. And I want y'all to lock in. It's going to be a game changer. Thank y'all so much. I look forward to all that God's going to do. Stay right here on Deeper Dive. I promise you, this will bless your life.